In the neighboring uh, nation of Congo, President Félix Tshisekedi has been sworn in for a second term following chaotic and contested elections. He was inaugurated in the capital Kinshasa in a ceremony attended by some 20 African heads of state. Tshisekedi and his party won the vote by a landslide, but the polling was marred by fraud allegations and logistical disruptions. His rivals have urged their supporters to voice their opposition on inauguration day. DW correspondent Jonas Gerding in Congo's capital, Kinshasa, told us more about the ceremony. So around the stadium, there was really the cheerful atmosphere. People were coming in masses. They were, they were singing, they were waving flags, and brass bands were playing. And so this was a really nice atmosphere, but there was also quite a lot of security personnel. So when I went down to the actual city center of Kinshasa, it was pretty much empty. I was quite surprised because it's normally a place which is very crowded. It's a place where you put much of traffic jams. So apparently the supporters of Chistikiri, they went in masses to the stadium, but big parts of the society, they rather decided to stay at home. And how would you describe uh, the, the mood of the country since the controversial re-election? On the one side, there are enthusiastic uh, people that are very enthusiastic. So if you watch the television, for example, if you speak with people in the government offices, but also with the supporters of Chisikiti, they really believe that this is the man who will bring the country forward. But if you talk to other people, especially in the rather poorer neighborhoods, Many of them, they will say the, the elections, they didn't really trust all of the results. They said it was really chaotic. But I would rather say it's a general thing that many people, they have made the experience that politics in generally isn't there for them to solve their problems. And how does his uh, political track record look? And, and how much confidence is there that he'll be able to fix the country's problems? Yeah, on... On the one side, there are people uh, who say that he's achieved a lot. So, for example, if you look at some of those major things, such as um, bringing down the costs for primary education, he brought the DRC back to the international diplomatic scene, he attracted investors. But if you look at the details, many of the things that haven't yet materialized. And um, so this is something, again, if you look into the, the communities, if you look and speak to people in especially in the rural areas, you don't see so much, so much impact. And the war in the East is still raging, economic problems arrive, inflation is very high. But at the end of the day, apparently the majority said that we're going to give this president a second chance. And it, just briefly, if you, if you don't mind, Jonas, the opposition doesn't want him to have a second chance, called, has called the election a sham, and is calling for more protests. Uh, how is this all going to end? Do you think they'll continue keeping up the pressure? The thing is, it's not very likely that they'll be able to, to achieve uh, big things. First of all, they didn't go to the constitutional court and they didn't ask it to question the elections. So what remains is the street and they already asked their supporters to go to the streets twice. But every time, not many people followed them. So there's not, not much things to be expected, I, to be expected, I believe. All right. Thank you for that insight. DW correspondent Jonas Gerding reporting for us from Kinshasa.